Many of us have good intentions of taking in a rescue dog, but due to the trauma they've undergone, some dogs are going to exhibit behaviour that lands them back in the shelter, looking for another forever home. Dog behaviourist Darren Rowe believes with some simple training and a few sessions, he can get rid of this behaviour to make sure that the dog get a real second chance. Welcome, Darren. Hi. And welcome, Ginger, who's just making <laughs> herself known. Yeah. She's, she's going to be a superstar, right, Ginger? So tell is. us a little bit about your background in this area. So I've been I've been training dogs now for, well, canine behaviour for about 17 years now, mm -hmm. and I've worked in many different environments. I've met, probably trained hundreds of different rescue dogs, and I've worked uh, quite recently or more recently in the SPCA, so I was a canine behaviourist there. So I got to know a lot of rescue dogs really, really quite up and close, mm -hmm. and some of those behaviours that were coming through were, were, were pretty much the same through, for most of the dogs. So what struck you most about the rescued and abandoned dogs? Yeah, so, so quite a lot of the times they've, um, they've, they've come from really bad backgrounds and they're really traumatised and, and we don't appreciate that how traumatised those dogs are. So the behaviours come out with, um, the behaviours come out as aggression, they come out as uh, jumping up trying to bite you, um, mm. stealing food, all those naughty behaviours that we class that aren't sort of appropriate for our world, yeah. So what are some of the things that these dogs have been through? What? Oh gosh, um, some of them too horrendous to talk about yeah. I will say. There was, there was one case that I remembered um, where a dog had the collar so tight that after about three or four months, the, the skin grew over the collar. Oh. And, and that was just one of the sort of many, yeah, it was horrendous. So people get these dogs and think that they're bad dogs because they have these, these uh, behavior problems, don't they? Yeah, that's right. And, and behavioral problems really are just mechanisms to cope with stress. And these guys are incredibly stressed. They've had such a stressful life that you mm. wouldn't even believe it. So. so if someone does take a rescue dog mm. home to the family, what are some of the issues that they might face? Um, first of all, first of all, it's probably what they shouldn't do. So quite often when you bring a rescue dog home, you want to love them, don't you? You want to yeah. give them loads of attention. It's actually the worst thing you can ever do. You want to just give them space uh -huh. because they need to find their feet in their, in their new home. And if we over-cuddle them and over-stress them, it's just adding more and more stress so they freak out. And then those behavioural issues start coming out again. It's really interesting because yeah. you wouldn't even think about that. You think no, give well, them just, all the love. We just want to cuddle them, don't we? Mm. Yeah, definitely. So the issues that they'd come with, though, they are fixable for most dogs? Pretty much, yeah. It's just understanding where the motivations for those behaviours have come from, I guess. So the classic one is they're not socialised, mm. um, so they're not very good with a dog. So once you understand they're not trying to be the top dog and not trying to dominate other dogs and they're just not socialised, then you can fix that one. Um, the jumping up, uh, trying to sort of, the, yeah. the big bully dogs, they jump up and drop you down. Um, that's just normal dog behaviour. Mm. It's just not appropriate for us. So we just need to teach them that there's a better option and that's what Ginger's mm. doing at the moment, just lying down. Can you socialise any dog at any age? Like say you pick up a risky dog five years old, can they still be socialised? You can do, but it, you... The, the time limit will be different. Obviously, a puppy is going to learn much faster than an older dog. But yes, you can. You just need to take it very slowly and, and just make sure you're keeping it really safe at the same time. Now, you've got Ginger here. Now, I Ginger have... isn't actually a rescue dog, is she? No, so she... we've had Ginger as a puppy. Yeah. Um, but you have... Tell me a little bit about Pixie, who is yeah. one of your rescue dogs. So, so Pixie's a, a sweetest little Border Collie. Um, Border Collie cross, we think is a German Shepherd, we're not really sure. And she came into the SPCA, uh, SPCA in fact, and... Um, she was surrendered um, because the, the woman couldn't look after her anymore because she was getting too aggressive. Is that that's Ginger in the middle there? Yeah, or the that, that's, yeah, that's the little, Pixie? little tiny one, Aww. yeah, that's Pixie in the middle there, yeah. Sorry, continue. <laughs> so, so <laughs> she's a real cutie, she really is. So um, Ginger, uh, sorry, Pixie was um, basically in a small sort of four metre courtyard with a shock collar and a chain because she was a barker. So you can imagine she was horrendous. She, if you went anywhere near a collar, you, she'd take your hand off, and she mm. nearly did at some point. Um, so we did a lot of the mindfulness stuff with, with her, and now she's a real sweetie. You can touch, you can do whatever you like with her. That's incredible. Um, oh, yeah, continue. No, so when we, when we first put her into the paddock, first of all, well, you can mm. see there, um, she ran around for three hours solid, squealing like a little piggy. She was just amazing. Because she's a border collie. That's yeah, what they want to do, run, isn't it? never run in her life. Oh, so it was just fantastic that's to watch awful. Yeah. So Ginger is here, though, to be our, um, our model dog today, yes. isn't it? So you're going to yeah. show us a couple of techniques you can do yeah, to calm so, dogs down. So the mindfulness is exactly what it sort of... Like dog mindfulness. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, it's about us controlling our emotional state and then the dog reflecting that. Yeah, so it's a bit like parenting, really, isn't it's it? It's exactly like parenting. <laughs> In fact, I think of her as a two-year-old child, and then we can't go wrong. So if I've got Ginger here, she's a bit spooked by all the cameras and everything, so I'm just going to literally relax myself and we'll just see what happens to Ginger when we do that.
So that's what we teach Ginger, that's what we teach all the rescue dogs, how to control that emotional state. And that becomes a, a technique that the new owners and the fosters can use to calm them down when they're getting too stressed. Oh, gorgeous. And then we can do a lot of massage and that sort of thing on here oh, as well. My dog's just cuddles. Can totally we do that well. with my children? That's what I want to do. <laughs> I don't oh. know if you can wear a collar on a child. Oh, no, I think, actually, I think, no, I think we're going to keep clear of that. Oh, we have trouble. So tell us a little bit about your Second Chance for Life campaign. What exactly is yeah. that? So, so obviously I've been seeing quite a lot of rescue dogs mm. coming to me and they've, they've all been doing the same behaviours. And what happens is normally someone will take that behaviour, they can't really cope with it. So then six months later that dog will just get bounced back to a shelter or rehomed to someone else yeah. without telling them what the behaviours are, are and then the same mm. thing happens. So my thoughts were really to get into the rescue centres myself, start to train those dogs of those behaviours, work with the foster parents who do a great job mm. and teach them how to train the dogs and, and take some of that trauma out so that when the new owner gets the, um, the rescue dog, it's not, not displaying all those crazy mm. behaviours. What did you do with Ginger to then, though? Like, did you, it felt like it was like a Jedi mind thing. <laughs> kind of, did. yeah, you could yeah. say that, yeah. Jedi dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So really it's about, dogs reflect our energy levels and they reflect our, and there was a big study about cortisol levels mm. in dogs, stress hormones, and so I've just totally relaxed, and so she just reflects that relaxation. Wow. So if people at home want to help, what can they do? What can they do? So you can go to my website, and um, as you go in there, it pops up with a, um, a give a little page, mm -hmm. and you can help to donate to that. All of that money goes straight to me training the dogs, helping with the rescue centres, helping with the foster parents, maybe even providing some of the harnesses and the leads wow. and that sort of thing that we can use. You're going to make it a little bit easier for these dogs to get a second chance and find their forever home. That would home. be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Excellent. Hey, idea. Darren, thank you so much. No and worries. thank you, Ginger, too. Ginger's gone for a wander. <laughs> and if you would like to make a donation to the Second Chance at Life Appeal, you can go to the Give a Little page.